Robert Edmonton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak this evening to speak of the government's unprecedented invocation of the Emergencies Act. This act has been on the books for 34 years. And in those 34 years, it has not been used on a single occasion. Not during the Oka crisis, not during Caledonia, not in the wake of September 11th, not following the 2020 blockades of critical infrastructure, including railway lines and pipelines that went on for two months, never before. And there's good reason, Mr. Speaker, that this act has never been invoked before. And that is because it is exceptional legislation meant for the most extreme of circumstances. And with that, it provides government with sweeping powers that infringe upon the charter rights and civil liberties of Canadians. Powers including prohibiting public assemblage, seizing property, freezing bank accounts without warrant, limiting or prohibiting travel within Canada, and I could go on. Extraordinary powers indeed, Mr. Speaker. And in light of the exceptional nature of this legislation intended for the most extreme circumstances, the threshold that must be satisfied uh, in order to establish that there is a national emergency pursuant to the Act is indeed an extremely high threshold. An emergency under the Act is an urgent and critical situation that seriously endangers the lives, health, or safety of Canadians, or that seriously threatens the ability of the Government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security, and territorial integrity of Canada. And not only that, Mr. Speaker, the emergency must be of a nature so as to exceed the capacity or authority of a province to deal with it. And not only that, no other law on the books can effectively deal with the situation. Mr. Speaker, it is patently clear that that threshold, that very high threshold, has not been satisfied. Indeed, it has not come close to being satisfied. The government, in justifying the invocation of these extraordinary powers, talk about ending blockades. Indeed, when one turns to the order in Council issued on Monday that specifies the nature of the purported emergency, the order in Council speaks of the continuing blockades of critical infrastructure, including trade corridors and international border crossings. It speaks to the adverse impacts that these blockades have had with trading partners, particularly the United States, and it speaks of a breakdown in the supply chain and availability of goods as a result of these blockades. However, Mr. Speaker, there's a big problem for this government. There are no blockades in Canada today, not on the Canada-US border, not anywhere. And, Mr. Speaker, there were no such blockades on Monday when the government invoked the order in Council and the Emergencies Act. Now, there were blockades on the Canada-US border at Coots, 
Windsor, and Surrey. Those blockades were unlawful, uh, they were wrong, and they were dispersed prior to the invocation of the Emergencies Act under tools already available to law enforcement and under existing laws. I remind the government that in the Act, in order to utilize the Emergencies Act, it must be demonstrated that no other laws on the books can reasonably be used. That simply has borne out not to be the case. So we are now left, Mr. Speaker, with the situation here in Ottawa. Uh, there are trucks outside on Wellington in front of Parliament Hill. There are uh, some protesters. And uh, in addition to the street in front of Parliament Hill being affected, there are some streets immediately around the parliamentary precinct in downtown Ottawa that are affected. And yes, it has created unpleasantness. Yes, it has been a nuisance. Yes, there have been illegal activities by certain people who are here. And Mr. Speaker, the, that does not constitute or that does not make a national emergency. Indeed, all of the tools that exist are there and have been used. For example, the honking of horns. Now, that has largely been addressed by way of an injunction issued by a judge. Uh, when it comes to the criminal code, uh, uh, transportation laws, uh, municipal bylaws, those are tools on the books to address this situation. But Mr. Speaker, what cannot be justified is invoking the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act is not needed, it's not warranted, because, Mr. Speaker, there is no national emergency. And so what we have is a prime minister who has invoked the Emergency Act absent a national emergency. That, Mr. Speaker, is an abuse of power on the part of the prime minister. It is a perversion of the rule of law. It threatens the rights and freedoms of Canadians right across Canada, not just those who are standing outside Parliament Hill. And it sets a dangerous precedent of normalizing the extraordinary powers authorized pursuant to the Act. The Prime Minister knows that the threshold has, been, has not been met, but the Prime Minister doesn't care because for the Prime Minister, it's all about political theater. The Prime Minister knows what he is doing is wrong and that he is acting unlawfully. And so the members on that side of the House, the members in the NDP, the coalition partners of this government, have a choice. They can follow the law pursuant to the Emergencies Act, or they can aid and abet this abuse of power on the part of the Prime Minister. The choice is clear. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Yeah.